Hi, George here. And today we're going to be adding in some text and make this birthday card, plus a couple more little fun tricks in here. Now, before we jump into this project, make sure you take a look at my complete training course for Affinity Photo. I'll put a link for that at the top of the description. Now, for this, I'll be starting off with a brand new image. Let's just go ahead. We'll close this thing down and I'll choose Save As. I don't want to be flattening anything here. And I'll just call it Birthday Card. There you go. Saved and gone. And to start this off, we'll be using a piece of clip art. And an easy way to do that here in Affinity Photo is to go over to the Stock tab right here. If you don't have this showing, go up here to Window. And it's right down here where it says Stock. Just check that. And here's your Stock tag. Now, I did a search for Birthday Cake. And you can look on either Pixels or Pixabay. I used Pixabay. And then just find something in here. Now, these are kind of small. You can make the area larger, but it doesn't make your images any bigger. So that just gives you more columns to work with. And I picked this one here and you can just drag and drop this right into Affinity Photo like that. There we go. Or if you want to see more information about this image, double click on this and it takes you over into Pixabay onto the page for that particular image. There we go. And you can download here, different sizes. So you have some options if you do it this way. Now, I don't want this background. It's kind of a messy background. The bottom's okay, but we need to clean out the top. So for that, go back over here to our layers panel. Right click on the layer. Let's make a duplicate of this and hide the original. And that's our safety. In case things get messed up, we can always go back to the safety. And in here, I'll make a selection around this and I'll use a layer mask to hide that background area. And I'll just use my favorite tool. Go over here, left hand side, click on the rectangular marquee tool, hold your mouse button down and you get the options. Click on freehand selection tool. And then up here under type, I'll put this out polygonal right there. And make sure we're at new mode. We'll leave feathering at one, that should be okay. And let's come in here and make your selection. Now with this tool, you click dots and then Affinity Photo goes in and fills in the line between your dots. If you have a curved area like this, you put your dots closer together. If you have more of a straight area, your dots can go further apart. And the real trick here is just taking your time to position each one of the dots so it's in the right spot. But we'll come back in and we're gonna be cleaning this up anyway afterwards. Part of the reason for that is we do have some dark outlines in there. We're going onto a light background, so there will be some dark haloing around this, but it's fairly easy to fix. Now, whenever you're using a polygonal lasso tool, make sure you take your time on your placing of your dots. If you click too fast, it's going to collapse your selection. You don't want that. So just give it a click, wait a beat, and then do your next click. Normally, as you're finding your next spot, that's enough of a beat anyway, so it's usually pretty easy, but keep in mind it can possibly collapse on you. So don't go too fast with this tool. This actually is the hardest part of this whole project. So here's where you want to take your time and get this right. And let's go around these raspberries up here and we'll finish making our selection. And once we have that, we can then come in and do a background gradient, which has some nice options in here in Affinity Photo. Okay, coming around this side down here, a little more open here so we can go a little bit longer on our movements in there. Shorter moves, of course, around these curved areas. And then longer moves around the larger smooth areas. And when we get to the outside here, just a second, you can actually click outside, hold the space bar down. We can then move this up. Let go of the space bar, this stay outside like this and clear around down here, back up this direction. Space bar again, and back and go right on top of your beginning spot there and click. And that completes our selection. Now just go over here, right hand side, and click on the mask layer button. And it gives us a layer mask for that. Use the control D keyboard shortcut to delete that selection. Now I want to have this layer mask tied in with this layer below it. So I'm going to right click on this and come down to mask to below. That then links that layer mask onto that one layer. Okay. You'll see it, there's a separate mask right below there. Now that that's done, we can clean our edges up. So it has some dark edges in here, especially on the light side. That's the part I want to clean up. If it's dark over here, it's on the shadow, it doesn't matter. But if it's dark on this side, I want that to be gone. So we'll do that fix on the layer mask itself. Notice that there is a little thin light blue outline around that. That means that the layer mask is selected. So you go over here, grab the paintbrush. Make sure your foreground color is black. You should see it over here or up here right hand side. 
if you see white dot in front like that, just click this little double arrow and that switches it. The black dot is now in front. And if we paint black onto the layer mask, it's going to hide anything. If I paint white, it's going to show. So black hides, white shows. And then all I have to do is just come in here and carefully paint along these edges. Now you notice one thing about Affinity Photo, and that's that even though up here it says that the opacity is 100%, it actually isn't. It'll take a couple of passes to get this perfectly solid. So you'll still see a little bit of something showing through. I can show that even better if you come down here. I'll make a new layer right here. Let's fill this layer with white. I'll reverse my colors. Go up to the Flood Fill tool. Let's make sure we're still reversed. There we go. We'll fill it with white. And they can really see that edge. Okay, back to our paintbrush. And let's go up here back onto the background layer. Make sure you're still on the layer mask side. You can tell if you are because the color swatch up here will be black and white. Okay, now I can come in and just carefully paint along that edge where those dark parts are. And we're just painting out that dark area. And again, it may take a couple of passes to do this. You can zoom in if you want to. Just zoom in like this real tight. You can see there's where... It's not quite fully going away, so it'll take a couple of passes to make sure that that's completely covered. Use the space bar to move your image. If you want to change the size of your brush, I see left square bracket to go smaller, right to go larger. I'll also go smaller here. And just take your time on this and kind of clean things up. You see a little bit right up in here. We'll just take that out and work around, and again, where this is important is wherever the raspberry is light in color. So there's some light hitting it. And you can see right here that we're seeing a little bit of that in there. So a couple of passes on that and that will go away. I can leave it over here on the right hand side. That's just fine. Doesn't matter down here. Space bar. And then same thing on this one. Just come in and paint this out. And again, take your time on that. Do a couple of passes on that. Doesn't need to be absolutely perfect. You don't have to get rid of all of that darkness, just a little bit, so it's not too much. So a little looks natural, like this would look natural. Too much looks like a halo. Okay, do the same thing in here for this raspberry. I'll leave a little bit on the raspberry in there. Again, that's gonna be okay, but too much is too much. Also, if you're leaving a little bit, try to leave it where there would be a bit of a shadow. This is kind of the shadow area for this one part of the raspberry. So I can leave a bit down here and it looks natural. That's okay. And we'll continue on and just finish off this part of the raspberry. You can see there's that little bit of a show through. I have to go back once or twice to clean that out. And then we'll get the top part and the back side. I don't care that much about. You're going to just take your time on this and it will come out just fine. I'm going to come in here and just knock off a couple of those pointy edges. And that should be okay. Space bar. Let's check this one down here. And this one looks okay. I'm not going to worry about that. Control zero. Fit screen again. And I think we're okay. Now on this pixel layer, we can fill this with a gradient and give us a new background. So over here to the gradient tool. This is just showing me two colors in here. Set fill at white and color picker at kind of a gray. I'll leave those as is. Come in here below someplace, click and drag like that. You can see there's your gradient coming in. I'm going to drag it clear off up here a long ways like that. So it's pretty soft on the gradient. And then make sure you click into this top part. Now inside of Affinity Photo, you can move your gradient around like this and get it just the way that you want. It's pretty easy to control these things. What I want is just straight up and up here someplace. And I clicked on this in, so I can go over here to the right hand side to our color panel. And I can actually change my color just by bringing in more color. I'll bring in more of the red in here, it becomes more of a pink like that. You can bring in a bit green if you want to and lighten it up just a little bit. We're going to be just a little bit of blue to help balance out the colors. The closer these are together, the more gray it's going to be. So if you move one and you want it more towards the gray, just move the other ones kind of over in that direction as well. And that gives us a nice soft gray up here in the background. Again, I could go more red if I wanted to, just like that. And that looks nice with the reds and pinks and so forth in those raspberries. And I think that looks pretty good. Let's just switch out of there, click onto the Move tool, and that's out of that section. Okay, now one special thing here. I'm going to back out just a touch like that. I use the wheel on my mouse to zoom in or zoom out. I could just use the zoom to put the wheels faster. Now, if you don't have that set up, go up here to Edit, come down to Settings, 
And then on the Tools tab, I'm going to click here where it says Use Mouse Wheel to Zoom. It just makes it really easy to zoom in and out with the mouse wheel. And the reason why I zoomed out is because of the effect we'll be placing onto the text. I want to have this background larger. So grab the upper right hand corner, drag that out, bottom left hand corner, drag that out. That just gets the edges of that gradient away from the image. And you'll see why in just a little bit. Okay, let's go back up here to our top layer. I'll use the control zero to zoom in on that. And then left hand side, I'm down here to the type. If you click and hold, you see we have two type tools, artistic text and also frame text. Basically artistic text is your headlines and frame text is for paragraphs of text. We're not doing paragraphs. We just want a headline text. So click on the artistic text tool. There it is. And then go up here and click in here to place text. Now it comes with a real small typeface. That's just a 12 point. I'm going to change that up to 72, a bit larger. And just type in happy birthday. And hit the enter key right there to give you this on two lines. Now, if you just drag over that text, you can select it. Let's go a lot larger than that. I'll try this 288. If you want to, you can come in here and just type in a specific size, but I'll use 288 just to begin with. Click on the move tool, put that right here. Let's set this at center aligned. That's better. And then over here, left hand side, we have all of our different typefaces, all of our different fonts. You can just scroll down and see the different typefaces. I happen to like big, thick typefaces for these headings. And your list will be different than my list. I've added a lot of these things in over the years. That one's kind of fun. Let's see what else we have down here. That's a pretty good one. There's one that I know that I want to use. And that's way down here. And this super comic. Now, I found this online over at defont.com. Let me show you that real fast. And this right here, this is a great site for getting different typefaces to use. You can choose your basic style in here. Here's a cartoon style. And again, the ones that I look for are the ones that are real thick. They make very good heading typefaces. If it's too thin, it's okay for paragraph typefaces. But if you want to have something that is easy to see on cards and stuff, then these thicker typefaces are better. And you can download these right here from download. Notice that some of these will say 100% free. Some will say free for personal use. So just check what the setting is here. This one is share where you need to send a little bit to use that one. So the different fonts may have different usage rights. So make sure you double check that. I always go for the ones that say 100% free. Then there's no problem with that at all. Let's go back, click on the icon up here. And then right here are instructions on how to install the fonts onto your system. It's easy to do. Okay, back over here again. And that's looking pretty good. You will go a little larger than this. I'm just going to go back to my type tool. You know, I'll drag over the text. I'll set this at 300. Hit the enter key. Just a little larger. Now the spacing in between this can be adjusted. Select your text. And it's right here. This is your paragraph letting. And I'm just going to come down here quite a ways to 88. Maybe a little further apart on that. Let's type in 300, so it's the same as the typeface. That's usually a pretty good choice. There we go. That's nice text. If you want to go wider on that, that's also okay. Let's say I wanted to go to 350 here and have it quite a ways apart. So the paragraph letting here is the space between your lines inside of your text. Now, I want to have a different color on this. Over here, right-hand side, our text is still selected. And you can actually change your color in here. Notice I can change the color of individual lines as well. If you want to change both your lines, just select all of your text. And then I can change all the lines at once. Now, on this one, I'll go over here and choose kind of a purpley, kind of a pink color, kind of a magenta in here somewhere. You go a little more towards the blue side. And you're looking for good contrast between the foreground and background. And I'll do that one this time. I'm just moving this around over here. You can see on the right-hand side, I'm just moving that around to try to find the color that I want. You can come in and be even more picky up here with your slider controls and adjust those exactly the way you want them. Okay, so that is set. Let's now put in our fancy stuff on this one. And to do that, we have a couple of steps. First off, come down here to the pixel layer, right click on this layer and duplicate that layer and then hide the bottom one. That's a safety. Let's come back up here to this layer. Come down here where it says FX, click on that. These are your layer effects. And in here we have this 3D option right there. And that gives these kind of highlights, kind of a 3D look. And click on the 3D style. And you get this real nice, kind of almost like a balloon look in here. I'm going to give it just a little bit of that, not too much. I'm still flat on the tops of the letters. 
You could, if you wanted to, go up here to Bevel and Emboss. And you have some options in here, but I don't think it's quite as nice as what we're going to be doing. So we're doing it the hard way. I like this a lot better, but we don't have that outside part of that emboss happening. Let me show you how that's done. Let's just close this down, click close. Hold the control key down, click on the thumbnail for your text layer. And that selects the text. Let's now hide that layer. Come down to your top pixel layer. This is your copy. And just hit the delete key. And that cuts a hole in that. Now do control D to deselect. And we'll now put the embossing on this one. Come down to the FX button. Back to our 3D. There we go. And we can adjust the radius right here. And this will give us that embossed effect that we're looking for. And you can really see that. If we bring back up the visibility on the birth date, there we go. And get this real nice kind of double embossed effect. So actually doing a 3D effect on two different layers, on the bottom layer and also on the text layer. And gives a real nice, very exaggerated pillow emboss effect in there. And the reason why I said we had to change the size of our layer, you can show that here. If I just pull this side in, you can see that it gives us that same bevel emboss on the edges of the layer as well. Control C to back out of that. So I had to get the edges away from here so it didn't have any embossing happening on the edges of the background. That was why we did that one step earlier on. And if you want to learn a lot more about how to use this great program, I have a complete course for Affinity Photo. And I'll put the link for that at the top of the description. I cover everything in here, all the tools, all the menus, panels, everything. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you hit that thumbs up and give me a like. Also, if you haven't subscribed already, make sure you subscribe. I'm doing new videos all the time. And I'll see you next time.